energy engineering. Our presenter is uh, Robert Bismith. Bismith. Joe, Joe Bismith. Okay. Mr. Hi, good morning, Mr. Everybody. Bismith, it's your time to present. Sure. Thank you, um, Professor Poon. So, once again, I'm here this morning, and now I'm looking at experiences of using a single assessment for two courses that are offered at UTT in the Bachelors of Applied Sciences in Design and Manufacturing Engineering. So, let's look at a brief introduction. So, of course, we all know that engineering education involves heavily the use of projects that require students to design and build devices. This is necessary because that's the profession that they will go into. So often these projects are assigned to groups because part of the education is developing that group dynamic. And also because of the scope of the projects is often a lot for individual students to undertake. Now everyone or anyone rather who has been part of a group project at university knows the problems that can arise with such, such design and build projects in terms of both time allocation, costs involved, and problems with in the group because of different personalities. Now, the thing that also tends to occur is that engineering students in particular tend to find that within a semester, they may have multiple group projects and they would often be due at similar points in time in the semester. So of course, this would lead to a stressful education environment. It has been shown that this additional stress, while is not something that can be readily avoided, it does contribute to poor academic performance. So one way that this may be alleviated would be the, the attempt to combine some of these group projects that occur. Of course, with the current COVID situation as well, many universities have found themselves in a strange position where it relates to funding and enrollment. A lot of students now may not be opting to come to universities if they have to do it online. And therefore, costs and funding are of greater importance to both of the local universities dealing with engineering. So such a system where each course administers a design and build group project is actually not very efficient in terms of the university's perspective as well. Engineering degrees are some of the most expensive degrees to administer per credit hour. And design and build projects often involves professors or lecturers having to spend time guiding students both in class and out of class. And then you have the technical staff being involved, use of lab time and material to build such projects. So in this study, what we did is we looked at two courses that had both, that both had a design and build group project. It was the same cohort of students during the same semester and we analyzed both of these projects to see what crossovers potentially existed between the two with the aim of being of trying to develop one common project that could meet both learning objectives and save time on both sides so to put things again into perspective the courses both lied within the BASC in manufacturing and design so this program is really set up to support the local manufacturing sector. And there's a heavy emphasis on practical trainings and training in relevant areas of the industry. It's offered both as a full-time degree and a part-time degree. Now, because it's designed, it's, it's focused on design, there's a heavy emphasis on project-based work. Students in this program are required to build a prototype throughout the entire course of study, starting from semester one in year one, all the way to their final project at the end of study. So they have a lot of time spent in developing prototypes and creating new designs. 
So for this study, we looked at two courses specifically, practical prototyping skills and introduction to engineer, energy engineering. So practical prototyping skills is a year one, six credit course. It consists of six modules and the modules really cover everything that a student would require to build a prototype. So looking at workshop technology, safety practices, electrical basics, instrumentation, prototyping on the whole communication, presentations, drawings, graphs, and so forth. Now, in this course, there is a group project that contributes 40% to the overall grade. Introduction to energy engineering focuses on the principles involved with energy conversion, transformation, utilization, and conservation of energy. And it looks at both renewable and non-renewable sources of energy. And students are really exposed to applications of thermodynamic analysis and heat and mass transfer. So here they have to evaluate energy requirements and technology required for manufacturing applications. Here a group project of 35% is used to assess student learning. So looking at developing a combined project, the energy engineering course wanted to have a test platform to measure heat transfer across several sample materials. It was a group of three to four persons and it looked at the creation of a physical structure to support the sample materials. And they had to apply a heat source to one side and measure really the heat transfer across the material, developing all the instrumentation that would be required, building the prototype <clears throat> test bed, and of course, undergoing the experimental procedure and reporting on the results that they would have gotten. Whereas the prototyping course asked the students to develop a solution to a problem that involved an electromechanical device. Once again, the group size was three to four persons. They had to design and build a prototype, validate the effectiveness of their design in solving the problem, illustrate the techniques used, of course, use the proper safety equipment, provide any electrical or electronic schematics that they would have used, and present the device and submit a report again. So this is a sample of what was done. Of course, it was a basic project really that involved holding the materials to be tested and applying the heat source to one side, implementing instrumentation on both sides of the material being tested and plotting graphs, taking measurements, etc to describe how the heat transfer was conducted across the material. So the deliverables for both projects were distinctive. So for the prototyping, the emphasis was really on the design method and providing details of the design itself. So we looked at the alternative design, sticker diagrams and whatnot, and reporting on how they would have gone about constructing a prototype. Whereas on the energy side, they were required to do background research literature review on the heat and mass transfer, involved, well, heat transfer involved, I should say. And more emphasis was placed on the experimental procedure as well as the theoretical analysis of what was happening in the system that they developed. Since this was really a pilot study, to kind of understand this approach to using a common assessment, pointing to a common assessment project, we decided to use a mixed method approach to analyze what the experience was for both the students and the lecturers. It was also a very small sample size. There were only seven students registered both for the prototyping and the energy course. And they were administered a survey that had fixed responses as well as open-ended questions. And of course, the lecturers involved were also interviewed to obtain their thoughts on what took place. So looking at the survey results from the students, it can be seen in the first three questions, which really spoke to how the course or the course project was related to both courses individually you can see that the students really were able to identify how this one project was applicable to both instances. 
and they felt that it helped identify the techniques really taught in both of these courses. There, was, there were two questions that were asked to really identify if they felt this was a good idea, if they felt this approach was worthy. The first of all, they were asked to come, if they thought it was a good idea to combine the projects, and the vast majority agreed with that, and they would like to see more courses use this approach. When it was asked if it was harder to prepare for such a combined assignment, there were more neutral responses on this one. So I don't know if this was due to the fact that the project itself was challenging to them, or, the or if they felt that it was more difficult to prepare for a single assessment. When it, it, a similar response was registered for if they felt it was better to have separate cross projects. What was clear though is that they felt they received better guidance or clearer guidance from both sets of lecturers because of this single project. So the students themselves commented that the fact that they could go to either one of the lecturers for the courses and be guided as to the direction helped them greatly in coming up with their final design. In terms of confusion, well, there was a slight tr trend towards being uh, not confused because of conflicting information, but the data was really spread. So that question is a little inconclusive. So we won't address that one conclusively right now. When it came to the lecture responses, the lecturers felt that students had more time to allocate to the project because it was one project rather than separate projects. And because of this, they felt that they, the students were able to focus better on that singular project and create one that is, was of higher quality. They also felt that since more time was spent on both courses in developing this singular project, the students were able to better understand the learning objectives and grasp the concepts a little better. More guidance was available, again, from the lecturer perspective. They were able to spend more time and they were able to rely on their colleagues to kind of fill the gaps that they might have missed in their sessions. And of course, the added advant advantage was that there was collegi greater collegial support in designing assessments so that a more robust assessment could have been developed that the students would have gained more from. So in conclusion, we can see that a combined project, especially where there are theoretical and practical crossovers, can improve staff collaboration and student overall understanding and preparedness. And the students, of course, indicated that this approach was beneficial to them. And staff were able to show a lot of positive outcomes from the study. Here are a few references. And that's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Bislett. Uh, this is a good presentation.